Welcome back, everyone. Uh, today, this we'll talk about the lab for Chapter 4, which this topic is classification. And we'll talk about various classifiers um, applied to the stock market data. And there's a description of the stock market data in this paragraph. Though if you ever want to read more about any particular data set, there are some notes um, on the, uh, the documentation web page for the ISLP package. You can find a link to that on the, uh, the statlearning.com uh, web page. OK, so as in uh, our previous labs, we continue the practice of importing all the key parts at the beginning of the lab. And some of the first chunk here are things we've seen before. And then we have some new imports. Um, the list looks a little bit daunting. We won't go through all of them. Um, I'll just note that many of these imports are, well, some are from the ISLP package. And the rest, all the rest of these are from the, S the scikit-learn or sklearn package. And these packages, uh, both the ISLP and sklearn and other packages, they turn out to change uh, uh, relative with some frequency. And sometimes you'll see that the code written here that we'll go through today, there might be a, a small error. And there are ways to track these errors. You can go to the forum on the statlearning.com webpage, and we'll try and address them and, and update, uh, update the lab as needed. OK. And so, we, And we also maintain an errata page. And sadly, there's already some errata for this, for this book. And so any errors that are reported will be reported there. So you'll, you'll be able to see if it's been noted already. Yes. The, the good thing about having these labs online is that we can update them and keep them running as things change. Right. Yes. OK, so um, as I mentioned, we're going to be using these classifiers from uh, scikit-learn. And we'll see there's many classifiers, um, l l linear discriminant analysis, LDA, QDA, Gaussian naive Bayes, and uh, k-nearest neighbors. And one of the nice things about sklearn is we'll see that besides the, uh, the name of the classifier, a lot of the, f the way we fit the classifiers are almost identical. So that's a pattern that will repeat itself in classification. Um, and other methods uh, that we'll see later from, from sklearn. OK, let's move on. So we're going to start by loading our data, the stock market data. We're going to try and predict uh, whether the stock price goes up or down. That's the direction variable. So that's going to be binary, yes or no, or up or down, I suppose. Uh, and then we have some of the, uh, the lag returns. These are the first five columns here, as well as the volume, some normalized version of the volume um, traded on that day. And a little heads up, we're not very good at this. If we <laughs> were, we probably wouldn't be sitting here. Fair enough, fair enough. That's true. OK. Um, so let's take a look at the correlation matrix of, uh, of the data to see if anything uh, pops out at us. Um, if it was very easy to predict um, uh, today's price, or which the, d the, the direction really is just whether today is positive or negative. It was very easy to predict um, whether it's positive or negative from the different um, different variables. We'd expect to maybe see some correlation. So for the lag variables, we see they're all pretty small. Um, there is a correlation. Uh, uh, there is a po one correlation in this plot that pops out. That is volume and year. And so volume is the, you know, the number of, uh, of these stocks traded in a given day. And we see a positive correlation with year. So the index year is the index here, so we can plot, um, or it, sorry, the day is the index here, so year is increasing as we go on this x-axis. And if we plot volume as a function of day, essentially, we see that it does tend to rise. So what this correlation is telling us is really that more of these stocks are traded over time. OK, let's fit our first regression model, logistic regression. So uh, as we've seen in the lectures, logistic regression is you know, a very standard classifier that's used um, you know, in many different places and is an example of what's called the generalized linear model. So we're using the GLM object from stats models. That's what SM is. And we're going to fit a regression model. So we saw last class, uh, sorry, we saw in lab th for chapter 3, we used the ordinary least squares uh, model. This differs, and we're using the GLM here. And one of the things we have to specify is tell it that it's logistic regression. And that's done by saying that it's a binomial family. Other than that, fitting this model is a lot like uh, the linear regression we saw in the lab for chapter 3. So we can fit the model and then summarize the results, getting estimates of um, coefficients for each of the variables, and um, you know, 
some assessment of whether these variables are significant or not. And well, as we see, uh, there's not a lot of strong evidence that any of these variables are really predictive of um, whether the stock will go up or down tomorrow. But as Trevor mentioned earlier, this is you know a very difficult problem. If we could predict whether a stock will go up or down based on some you know observable information in the past, we probably would be using that to make some money. Uh, but so not. it looks like it's saying if it went up yesterday, it'll go down today with a negative coefficient on, yes. on the lag one. Yes, yeah. though not a very strong one as we yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. So we talked in the chapter three, we talked a little bit about the results object that comes from um, the stats models package. You can find things like the parameters and associated p-values. We're going to use it to find uh, the predicted values. So these are the, since we have a binary regression problem, the predicted values are probabilities. So if we look at the predictions, we can, these are the first 10 probabilities. So for the first 10 outcomes, this is the predicted probability that it will go up, I believe, um, is, is the way this is coded. OK. So now what we're going to do is we're going to assess the accuracy of this classifier. So we have the actual labels. Um, that's the direction outcome. And we're going to make predicted labels. So what we're going to do is um, find all the probabilities. If the probability is bigger than 5%, we'll label that up. Those will be our predicted labels. And we'll compare them uh, to the, to the tr true labels in, this, in a confusion matrix. Like 50%, eh? Yes, 50, did I say? You said Five percent. Oh, five percent. <laughs> that that is a statistician's tick, I think, <laughs> because of a five percent significance uh, at fifty percent. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, so we're we're displaying the results in this confusion matrix, um, and this is a this is a, a, a function we wrote in the ISLP package. Uh, there are confusion you know code to make confusion matrix in other places. So we've just created a function so this aligns with the uh, the way confusion matrices are sort of labeled in the, in, the, in the book. So in the columns, we have the true label. And on the rows, we have the predicted label. So we can see here um, that uh, we have predicted uh, 457 plus 507 to be up. Um, and the, uh, the actual observed ones were 141 plus 507. So you can t assess the, the accuracy by looking at, you know, how we want the diagonal to be high, because that will tell us we have high accuracy. So the accuracy is going to be the number we got correct. That's the sum of these two divided by the total number of, of observations, 1,250, and about 52%. And we can get, that's the same as if we just average whether the labels are equal to the observed directions. OK, so it seems that we're doing not bad. Here we have 52%. Um, well, not great, but it's slightly bigger than 50%, mm -hmm. which is what random chance would do. I think in finance, this is considered a huge win. Oh, I would think so. 2% <laughs> is probably very good, yes. Because if you put enough money behind 2%, mm -hmm. you will do uh, very well. OK, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to split the data into test and training, as described uh, in, the, in the lectures. And so. Oh, that was training error, right, Jonathan? Oh, that's right, yes. Yeah so, yeah, so it's probably optimistic. Exactly, yes, yes. So to see, to get maybe a more honest assessment, we're going to use this, this split into training mm -hmm. and test data. So we're going to, and because it's time series data, we're going to split, uh, you know, training will use an earlier period and the test will be a later period. So we're going to take all the observations up to 2005 as our training set, and then everything else is going to be our test set. So we use that, we make this binary variable for the training labels. And uh, we can we will make two data frames, one for the training and one for test. And on each of these, we'll fit the logistic regression on the training data frame and evaluate probability predicted probabilities on the test data frame and reform the confusion matrix. Okay, so here we're doing essentially what we did above when we used the entire data set for training. Uh, here we just refit on the training data. And then we're going to find predictions on the test data. So to predict on the test data, we have to give a new design matrix. And that's here uh, represented by this exogenous argument as x test. OK, so we, we'll do the same thing uh, to produce labels. Uh, we will um, 
uh, threshold at 50% uh, of our predicted probabilities. These are probabilities in the test set, and we'll compare them to the test labels. OK, so now we see the accuracy is about 48%. And that's, unfortunately, slightly worse than random chance. We could just decide to reverse our predictions, but this is likely just close. To, it's close to random chance and probably just indicative that we don't have much power. There's, of course, some variance in this. OK. So let's try a slightly simpler model. So that the model we had just tested had all the five lags as well as volume. Let's see if we use a simpler model, uh, if we can do better, perhaps you know, recognizing that maybe we were over-optimistic in trying to fit these six variables. Maybe a simpler model with just two lags will, will do slightly better. So this will tr we're in effect trying to see whether we can beat the bias variance trade-off here uh, by using a simpler model. And repeating the same thing, except with just these two features, we now get a, uh, a test error of about 56%, which is better than random chance. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, so maybe this is a strategy we should trade on. But well, we'll see. Um, OK. Now, if you want to roll forward um, to find new predictions, um, here's a little example. If you had observed lags in f days that weren't accounted, how to find uh, predictive probabilities uh, going forward.